Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. And this time I'm going to be making myself a laptop sleeve. I've never owned my own brand new laptop until this year. We bought it in January, I was so excited. Um, and this is it, it's an Apple MacBook. And I love this colour. I've always just had hand-me-downs from Chris, including, of course, his laptop cases. So they've always been a bit blokey. So I've gone all out girly and chosen this lovely colour. I love it. And um, I'm going to make myself a sleeve. So this is what I'm going to use for the inner lining, which will probably show quite a bit. I've got this old duvet cover, which I can't remember where it came from. <laughs> um, but I wanted all the colours to sort of match with the same colour as the MacBook. This fabric, I've actually used some of this already. I made my cousin's daughter a dress with this fabric. But I've got plenty left. It must be a huge duvet cover. So I'm going to use this sort of really pretty sort of peachy. Can you see it? This sort of peachy floral pattern. So that's going to go on the inside to keep it nice and soft and protected. I've got my daughter's old dressing gown. So this is gonna go sort of in the interlining and that's gonna be keeping it nice and safe from when I drop it, cause that's bound to happen. And then the outside is going to be this, this lovely satin, which I don't know where it came from. I just had a quick dig in my um, fabric shelves over there just now and I found this and I thought, oh, that's lovely. It's quite light and delicate. I'm a bit worried about it being a little bit plain, so I then found this lace, which I will sort of decorate over the top a bit with it, and that will tie in the colours a bit better together like that. So that's what I'm about to do now. I'm sort of adapting a pattern my friend Lorraine gave me, who she used to make glasses cases. It's a brilliant way of making things without a seam showing. So I'm going to sort of adapt how she did that and hopefully make it all look nice, neat and professional looking. I've never made a laptop sleeve before. I thought if you'd like to have a go with me, we can see if we can figure it out together. Right, the first thing I have discovered is that um, my laptop is quite similar to the size of an A4 envelope. Um, so I'm going to use that to draw around. There's a, there's a bit of a difference in width but when you take into account the the depth at the edges, which isn't much, but also bear in mind I'm going to want a bit of a seam allowance, uh, that I think is going to be just about right. So I'm gonna put that to one side and um, I'm gonna use, this is the best thing ever. This, this is one of these air dry pens that just disappears off fabric. It is amazing i use this all the time i would definitely recommend you get one of these okay so i'm gonna just get most of the creases out of my duvet cover to begin with i'm just going to do the three sides i'm not going to worry about the top so i'm going to put two envelopes side by side so in the middle i'm just going to do a quick notch i don't need to i don't need to draw down the middle and then i'm just going to pick up the envelope move it along match it up and carry on i've got such uneven floors and gaps in my floorboards i've got to be a bit careful with this right i will sort of do a, a bit of a mark to show where the top is I'm just going to see how tall I need to make my fabric. I'm thinking of about a one centimetre seam allowance. Actually, I think I need to be slightly shorter than an A4 envelope. I'm just going to bring it down by about a centimetre. I'm just going to mark it by my thumb. Because this line is all rough, I'm just going to turn the envelope round so that I've got a straight line to follow at the top there. Mark it up where I've marked it. And just do half way along. Just go, I'm just going to do one side flat. The other side I want to point because that's going to be the bit that folds over, attaches to the front. So it's like an envelope basically. So I'm going to need to figure out how to do an even point on this. Actually, I could just make it uneven. That just makes it a whole lot easier. So I'm just going to turn. <laughs> yeah, that makes it easier. I'll have an asymmetrical um, point. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, does it? Right, so I'm just, I've just turned the envelope round and it's sort of, right, my pen is fading fast, so I'll quickly show you what I've done. So I don't know if you can see this, but we've got a double width envelope here. So I did, if you can 
see that that makes it easier that and that I've got a straight edge up to here I made it slightly shorter and we've got a straight line to the edge of the one envelope then I just turned the envelope like that to make the mark of my point so I drew around that over to this edge and straight down here so I'm just going to cut that out now because this pen is already fading so I'm going to quickly do that I'm actually going to cut slightly outside of the line because I'm a bit worried that my seam allowance isn't quite big enough allow a bit more of a seam allowance to this point here. Okay, so that's all the measuring we need to do. This is now our pattern. As you can probably tell, I don't, I do things a bit rough and ready. I'm not very, I don't bother with measuring. I just use, I, I often use the palm of my hand or fingers and thumbs as measurements. Um, so if you want to bit more of a precise step-by-step -step instructions then uh, maybe find a book <laughs> or I'm sure there's another youtuber that's done a laptop sleeve but anyway I'm doing it my way and that's how that's just how I roll next I'm gonna cut out the interlining which is the dressing gown I don't know whether I've got a panel big enough I hope I've got a panel big enough that I don't have to do a seam but it doesn't matter too much if I do have to go over a seam. This is a good dressing gown. Ah, yes, it does fit. Excellent. I'm really pleased about that. I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in the corners um, while I cut round it. Okay. Ah, that moment when you cut into a perfectly good item of clothing. Ah. <laughs> got a dressing gown big enough to do this with uh, to give you an idea this is age 13 um, I'm sure big jumpers would work just as well in fact I'm starting to worry that this is a bit too thin I'm wondering if I should do two layers <laughs> I sort of had to bend over sorry so uh, this is basically going to be my lining these two bits together I need a camera with a wider lens well I've actually decided that I don't think the one layer is quite thick enough for what I wanted it to be I want this to be properly protective so that I can carry my laptop in a thin bag and know that it doesn't matter too much if it gets knocked about. So I'm actually going, I'm moving up to the top of the dressing gown and I'm going to do another piece here. There's just enough to do another piece and it's it's annoying that the um, the dressing gown strap is sewn on but I can just about get around it and still fit in another piece between the seam lines so I'm gonna actually do a second layer I think I'll be I just feel happier with my laptop protected a bit more so I'm just gonna run that pin through another layer it's a bit more awkward at the top here because of the shape of the dressing gown I think I might actually just cut into it I'll cut it at the top there just to make it easier flatten it out a bit gets that bit out the way then that is really close I can just fit it on if you're doing this at home keep spreading it out like that to make sure that there's no creases or bumps underneath okay I'm gonna go for it it doesn't matter going over a seam but it just adds bulk where you might not want it might just make it a bit more difficult when you're sewing up the seams later there double layer i'm just going to test it with the laptop so that's going to go there that's going to go over there and that's going to fold well but the other way around <laughs> sorry the light is really changing i can't see a thing okay so now i'm going to lay out my outer fabric this time we put right sides together so if you've got a pattern piece of fabric I'm just trying to work out what side I want up I want this side up and then I'm going to turn that over so the lining the cotton pattern lining bit is facing the right side of the outside fabric I hope that makes sense okay that's quite sticky so I'm not going to bother with pin turning it over I can see actually where I've made that's not as straight as it should be 
I'm just going to straighten that up a bit. Okie dokie, I'm just going to flip that over. Yeah, because this has got really obvious creases, I'm just going to quickly go and give this an iron and see if I can get rid of that. I'll be back in a second. Okay, the satin is now ironed. I'm now going to decorate it with that lace before we go any further. Depending on the fabric you're using, you might be able to skip this bit out and I just can't see where I've put the lace down. Oh, it's behind me. So I'm just going to pen there straight across here. I'm also going to do a piece across the pointy bit because that's going to be the flap that comes over so I thought that'd be nice to have a bit there so I'm just going to do that next. Right I'm just going to sew those bits on. <laughs> going to pin right sides to oh first of all take out the pins from the lace so now right sides together like so and we're just going to pin across what's going to be the top so the straight bit and the pointy bit so if you've got pins in holding those three layers of lining down then make sure you take those out we're only going to be sewing across this top edge to begin with and before I forget, there's one more thing to do before we do that, which I nearly did forget. So when we've got this in place, <laughs> it's a sort of pattern that you're not really going to understand until it's all done. <laughs> but what we need to do is put a loop in this point because I will attach a button later, I'll do that last. But the loop needs to go in there first, so we need to remember to do that next. I'm going to use a stretch lace, I think, or a bit of elastic if you've got elastic. Stretch lace is prettier. So I'm going to see if I've got some that will go. I have to apologise for the mess in this room. Partly it's always like this, there's no point in pretending. But it is a bit worse at the moment uh, because I've got a different project on the go. I'm making cloaks, so I've got all the cloaks material around me but it is organized chaos i do know for example that my stretch lace is all in this lovely bag that my nan made and used to belong to her so what do we have okay rather than trying to match i think i'm just going to go for a different color and actually go for this brown i don't know if you can see it let me put it up against there it's not too wide and i think that's actually quite pretty so i'm gonna use that i'm gonna use about that much so i'm gonna cut off a length like that rather than just folding it over i'm taking those right ends and overlapping them like that it just looks like a prettier loop i think i'm just gonna now insert that into the point of my top half so this point here i'm gonna put this loop in in between the lining layer and the outer layer now this is where i often go wrong if i'm making things like this in a hurry i the automatic you automatically feel like doing it that way so that the loop sticks out you actually need the loop on the inside of the material trust me on this it may not make sense yet but so unfold your flap at the top of that point. Put in your loop on top of your lining layers so it looks like this, okay? Then put your top fabric over the top and pin carefully all together. I hope that makes sense. Right, so now I'm going to sew along here, up here, and then down to here. When I get to here, because I know that elastic has to be strong, I'm just gonna go backwards and forwards a little bit with my machine and then back down to the edge of that diagonal to there. That's what I'm going to do now. I hope you're following this okay. Because you're going through thick fabric, um, I would recommend putting your tension quite high. I've got mine on seven and I've just added a bit of length in the stitch just to stop it bunching up at the back. Otherwise I find it goes all loopy at the back. So hopefully that will help. Obviously everyone's machine is slightly different, but that's what I do. Next bit, all sewn up, all the way along there. 
that's the inside of your lining we now open it up like so you should hopefully have let your bit of elastic or stretch lace sticking out the point there what we're going to do next is though we don't need that bit yet keep that that may as well stay tucked in you then fold over your corners like that so right side right sides of the lining together and that's going to meet there right i'm going to so i'm going to take out these two pins you don't want to get them stuck in there right the thing to do now is see where your outside fabric and your lining meets just here your aim is to make sure that those line up so try and line that, that as best as possible, like so, and pop in a pin. That's your important bit. And I can't get this pin in and out. We have got really thick fabric going on now. Okie dokie. My lace isn't straight. Look, my lace isn't going to match up. That's a shame. My lace is going to end up wonky. I didn't think of that. I didn't think it mattered if it was all a bit wonky, but it does. Okay we learn these things this like i said this is the first time i've done this so i am learning too that is a shame though that's gonna bug me right what we're gonna do next is we'll line up these all together again so many layers to make sure they're all in a row okay i'm gonna pop a pin in there try and keep that neat look there's no way i'm gonna be able to push that pin back through next step i'm gonna start with the top of the outer fabric so that long and straight stitch i'm doing about a centimeter seam allowance then i'm gonna sew all the way down here straight stitch then it gets a bit tough i will probably change my settings slightly as we hit all these layers keep going till about here then i'm gonna stop and back stitch then i'm gonna leave a gap of about four fingers i reckon and then i'm gonna start so that's gonna be left as a gap and then I'm going to start sewing again from here. I'm afraid I've just done a massive YouTuber error and I've just been talking for ages and it hasn't been recording. So I'm going to have to try and remember where I was. Okay, let's go back. And then start stitching again about here, making sure you back stitch as you start. And then go to the end. And then, I don't know if you can figure this out in your head, this pattern, but this bit is going to be the bottom of the sleeve. So when you put your laptop in, that's the bit it's going to hit. So I'm going to change to zigzag stitch for the last bit across here. And then that's that bit. That's the next stage. So I'm going to get going with that now. I hope you're, I hope you're managing to follow this all right. <laughs> sewn together now the reason why we left this gap is we're now going to pull everything through it everything hopefully the gap is big enough and you just have to sort of push it right so now we're left with the lining here here's your point with your bit of elastic or stretch lace sticking out so what we need to do now is make sure that the points at the bottom of the outer layer are out that might mean like sticking your hand back in that hole and just pushing those points out to make sure they're properly out there we are that's better also in the point where the lace is put your finger in there as well to push that out there we are and then what we need to do is sew up this gap here now i think i'm going to do this by hand because this is so thick i don't think my machine is going to be able to handle that and you know what just because i'm vain I'm gonna put a little Oshun label in. You never know, I might sell this one day or give it to somebody. Right, now we put the lining inside the outer layer. There we go. And there we have it, more or less. So that will flap over there and I'll sew in a button down here. thing the elastic is all tucked in it all fits very snugly um to be honest this one has ended up a little bit too tight here and there i trimmed the edges to neaten it up to straighten up the edges 
I actually cut those bits out of the edit because I didn't want you to do the same thing. I think because the the fabric ended up being so thick, you really you needed probably a bit more than a centimeter seam allowance for this. So if you're doing this and um, this is a 12 inch MacBook, then definitely the A4 envelope is the right size. But I would say don't cut it shorter at the top because you can see it, it's visible in these in the in that corner particularly this corner's all right i can probably just push it down a bit but it just means that yeah i can push it down a bit but i would have preferred a little bit more protection there yeah it does go in that's better but you see what i mean it is a snug fit and of course it needs to be a snug fit but don't be tempted to trim into that seam allowance maybe add half a centimeter when you're cutting out your pattern right at the beginning using an A4 envelope. So that's that, it's all done, and I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you managed to follow making of it all right. And if you did follow along, and if you have made your own, I would absolutely love to see your laptop sleeves, and it would be great if you could send me a picture. That would be lovely. So that's it from me, thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you found this helpful or just enjoyable to watch, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more sewing videos. Thanks.